being lowered, um, and by doing that, um, wherever we're lowering the ground level, we're technically um, reducing it into flood zone two slash three because you're lowering the levels. Um, however, in this case, with the dwelling there or not, um, the flood because of the time it's taken to deal with this application, <coughs> the Devon County Council flood wall has been built, um, and that in itself has lowered the levels um, of the site. Um, and obviously, with the Devon County Council flood wall being for the purpose that it is, um, that, that does deal with, with the flooding issues that um, the flood zones try to um, take us away from in terms of building new residential development. Um, so it does allow the opportunity for forward running on the site without having the, the same risks that you would potentially normally have when you're going to flood zone two and three because you have got that line of defence um, in this site with the, with the new flood defence wall. Yes, so to answer my question then, when it's dug down, I don't know how to technically affects it. Uh, it will go into flood zone two or three because it will be lowered. Yes, but what I'm saying is, in terms of technically, is it's already potentially in that flood zone two and three because the Devon County Council flood wall has already lowered it to that point because the levels have already been lowered. So whether the dwelling's there or not, it's going to be in that same zone. I'm sorry, the, 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 the Dublin County Council flood wall um, is to the north, not where the site is. So if it's been dug out to put the wall in, that hasn't affected where the site of the building will be. And in any case, we don't um, make allowance for um, flood alleviation schemes and the determination of um, a, a classification of flood zones. No, you're right. In terms of the Environment Agency flood maps, they don't take into account flood alleviation schemes in how they create those zones. However, obviously the, the reason those flood zones and why we direct development away from those flood zone two, three, is usually to avoid flooding of those properties where they're in flood zone two and three. But that has been mitigated by the flood wall um, and members need to take that into account in determining whether or not um, you would support a, a dwelling in this location. Thank you. Um, any more questions, members? Uh, um, I understand the key issue is not what the risk of flooding is from the surrounding land, uh, but the risk of flooding that this development would pose to a neighbouring uh, property. Um, are the officers confident that there would be no risk of extra flooding from the development and the the roof area, the hard standing for the gap for the cars, etc. If this development goes ahead, yeah, our drainage specialists have looked at that and they're comfortable from that point of view. Yes, obviously, the building a new dwelling in this site would create areas of impermeability with, as you say, roof and materials, etc. But it also <coughs> creates opportunities on the site which aren't there at the moment to create um, more permeable surfacing through the use of, as I said before, of, of the grass room for the garden and the grass banks. Um, and obviously putting a, the surface water scheme in there at the moment that's not there um, and you've also got the permeable surfacing for the drain and um, for the driveway um, and also the, the drainage channel on the bottom of there which isn't there at the moment um, which whilst it's there to help this dwelling um, from, in terms of dealing with its surface water obviously that would have a knock-on effect on other dwellings in the street in stopping some of that surface water from, from going on their properties as well any other can I? Yeah. Um, on the site meeting, um, you explained that there were going to be attenuation. There was going to be a, some attenuation yeah. tanks built. I think, sort of, um, you know, on the edge. You know, uh, on, uh, in fact, I, I think they they may already be built. Are they, uh, or so, they? So there's it's, it's in here. Right. That's where the attenuation chamber would. That's go. so. That's a yeah. chamber. So. Where does that chain? Where does that water discharge to? Does that, that? That's part of the final design detail. So it needs to further testing, um, and so that's been created as a, as a condition by a drainage specialist that they're happy with the principle of using attenuation to right. change the system, but the final details will be secured by condition, and that will be prior to its installation. Okay, so it might discharge into the Devon County Council flood. Um, you know, system pipework. 
it probably would have its own system, but that, as I say, would be would be the final. Design. Okay, so it might possibly be a pump system, would it be? As I say, I'm not, I'm not right, a drainage expert. Yeah, no, 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 it would be for our drainage experts to agree that detail when it came in as part of the condition. Yeah, understand. That's yeah. fine. Cancer tables. Yeah. No, I was fine. I was asking the same question, really. Yeah. Because I didn't know what the material that was put there was, whether it was clay or whether it was permeable um, when when it was that fit. Because a lot of the material came from the other building sites to fill up that gap. Yeah. I mean, I I roughly know what it was before. Um, so. Um, it's just, is it going to be permanent? But that'll be tested anyway, won't it? Yeah, um, that's the condition, yeah. Councillor Hodgson. Yeah, can I just ask what's the distance from that new attenuation tank to <coughs> the neighbouring property, which is just to the mm. south? Yeah, they always have to be five metres to meet uh, building regulations, and that would be something, as I say, part of the final drainage design details that they would need to check that. Is that possible within those regulations? In that corner? Is um, that possible? Yes, it is possible within that, that corner to get that distance in. Um, but as I say, this final design details of this would be um, as part of that drainage condition that would be required to installation mm -hmm. and to check that within those regulations. Thank you. Um, if I can ask a question, obviously with flooding zones and the sequential tests, uh, normally we wouldn't allow building, well we would allow building in a, in a flood zone 3 uh, if there weren't other places that you could build. Um, are you saying that because of the, the alleviation, uh, the flood alleviation scheme of Devon County Council <coughs> somehow mitigated against? No, what we're saying is because the levels have changed, um, there's this discrepancy of where, where the original levels were where the new levels are um, in terms of whether this would go into flood zone two and three. Um, so our drainage specialists feel that it would go into two and three, but they don't have where the original levels are. Um, so what they're saying is it's for us to conclude whether um, a dwelling in this location would be acceptable, taking into account that obviously we've got a number of properties within, within that cold sac who are already within that, that flood zone. Two and three. Okay, I'm 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 a little bit nervous about that because you know we will have applications that will come before us that will be in flood zone two and three, and we'll refuse them on those grounds because of the sequential test that they should build them somewhere else. Yes, yeah, so it would be for for members to decide whether in this set of cases. You've obviously got a mitigation factor there, and that you have got the Devon County flood wall, um, and so that, as I said before, has addressed the surf historic surface water flooding and would protect this property. Um, and it's optimally to decide whether that is an interior planning consideration for you to take into account in these specific circumstances of this scheme. Whereas other sites, obviously, you wouldn't have that that secondary line of defence in place when you're considering them. Thank you. Um, any more questions, members? No? Thank you very much, Ms. Bouvier. And we will now move on to the objectors spoke at last month's meeting, so we will have a supporter, um, Ms. Baker. Uh, yeah, uh, right, I'm Jill Baker speaking as agent in support of this application. The final proposal is the result of working collaboratively with South Hams over two years and we have made changes to address any shortcomings. The planning officer has explained the proposal complies with planning policy, so I'm going to speak in relation to key objections. The application has actually been up to five rounds of consultation rather than two. Importantly, since December, during three consultation periods, there have only been two households that have objected. There were also two supporters. The other parties who have previously objected have not renewed their objections. The site in its current form is the result of the contractor carrying out work on behalf of Devon County Council to install the flood alleviation scheme, where impermeable compacted hardcore was laid to house site offices and a bearing for heavy plant and mach machinery, the result of which has given way to concern with regard to water runoff to the road during heavy rainfall. This layer will be completely removed when the new dwelling is built and replaced with grass areas and permeable papers to the driveway, which itself will almost be level when the ground is reduced. 
An aqua drain will also be installed across its width, filtering to an attenuation tank. All hard surfaces, including the roof, will also be fed into the attenuation tank and controlled by way of a hydro brake. The area to the front of the dwelling, with the steep banks, will also be removed to form gently sloping grass areas contained by dwarf walls bordering the pathway at around 600 mil high. With this all in mind, it must be understood that the site cannot be judged in its current state. I would like to address and correct statements made by Councillor Austin at the site meeting. The area of land was not as claimed but left as the worst bit of land to be built on due to flooding, but in fact at the time was designated as a child's play area, which was never adopted by the council until the land was purchased by the applicant in 2012. The 37 objections are only from nine different households and were primarily concerned with the flooding, which were prior to the Devon County Council alleviation scheme being built. The last consultation only had two objectors. One of the objectors openly admitted that the scheme was a success. Another concern is that when asked by a councillor if the houses still flood, Councillor Austin replied yes, this is totally incorrect. The only concern currently is regard to runoff from the road which has been addressed with the application's drainage plan. It is very important that the councillors understand that the Devon County Council scheme which addresses the pre previous pluvial flooding which has been a problem is separate to this application. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> members, do we have any questions for Ms. Baker? Yeah. Um, Councillor Abbott. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Baker. Um, I've got a couple of questions, please. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested in the extent of the flood wall along the southern face of the property. How, how far it would extend? Um, the Most of it has already been built. What you saw um, on site, the sort of V-shaped blockwork wall is the main area of football. That's actually a retaining wall with a 300 mil bund on the top. Um, so there'll be a level sort of grass area behind that in which the attenuation tank is contained. Um, around the, the rest of the site, there'll be a small sort of upstand to stop water spilling out into the road, but the slope on the front of the property isn't what you saw on the site at the moment. It's um, going to be significantly lower grading. Lower gradient in that you'll be able to take back the starting point of the slope further into the property. Um, at the moment, that the mound at the front is um, a lot higher than it's going to be when the site's remodelled. Um, on I, I, um, this drawing originally had some arrows around the front which were a bit misleading, um, making it look like it was a sort of um, there'd be a lot of runoff into the road, which um, the arrows were put on the floor, the drainage engineer's purposes, so we could see which way the land was falling. So um, I've clarified that on this drawing. Um, but the, the, um, the main bundle is that V-shaped bit um, by number 19 um, to the left-hand side of the dwelling at the front. So the drainage engineer produced the drawing I'm going to show later, but you produced this one. No, I produced that last one for the South Hands drainage engineer um, because he wanted to be absolutely sure in which direction all the bits of land were sloping. So the arrows on that drawing were showing which way the land was falling. Um, but um, for, the, for the purposes of um, showing where the flood water was going, um, that piece of land is what, two metres and it's a bit of grass in front of the house so the amount of water falling on that piece of land is, is negligible and doesn't actually need a bond wall. That piece of land is separated off from the back of the site by the V-shaped bond and then the bond um, uh, at the rear, um, okay. the left-hand corner of the property. Thank you. On, on, on that, um Effectively, there's a channel for flood water between the county's flood wall and the property's proposed northern flood wall. 
uh, where we're seeing the blue arrows going to the north. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then the um, progress of the water is for the water to turn to the south east. Mm -hmm. And then where's the water going to go? Um, there's an echo drain all the way along. But again, there is um, the likelihood of one wall overtopping is is nil, so we're looking at water that's falling on the grass in the site um, that will normally be filtering around the site, but we had to cut through a drainage scheme that covered um, where the water was going to flow from the site, and I think that's causing a little bit of confusion um, in making it look like there's going to be loads of water spilling out onto the road when there isn't, that's just and now she, there's a piece of grass along the back on which water will fall, and the arrows are showing that that will be running in an L shape around the back of the house, down the drive to an African drain. It's not a significant amount of water that is, is going down there. The African drain feeds into the attenuation tank. Cool. I'm sorry. The attenuation tank is down in the southern yes, part. If you look on the right hand drawing, um, there's a green line which shows the underground drainage pipes. So, so there's, this is the drain there's the ACO, the the it, um, it connects into an underground pipe yeah. which goes into the attenuation tank. The levels have all been checked by our drainage engineer and the South Hams drainage engineer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hodgson. Thank you. Yeah, you mentioned in your, um, your statement that um, South, the local authority didn't take over the play area. So you're mm -hmm. saying that a play area, that was area when the, when the rest of the site was built mm -hmm. out, that was going to be a play area. Yeah. Uh, and, and so are you saying that the um, the there was the the developer had, a, had an agreement with the local authority to take over? Yeah, unfortunately, they didn't. Back then, um, the planning policy was um, encouraging multiple small play area sites um, on new housing estates. And, and it's still was built um, at, at sort of the other end of Plymouth Pathway. Um, and this site um, was just left. There was no legal. Um, obligation for the developers to actually build any play area there and it actually now doesn't comply with the current sign of sports play area anyway. So there's no money allocated for the play area, no way of enforcing it. It's not owned by the developer anymore um, and it's not big enough um, for the sort of piece of land with um, being located at the end of the road that is suitable for um, I think Claire, <coughs> um, Claire or Jacqueline covered that previously. There's a full OSSR statement accompanying the application which fully explains um, that situation, um, which is available for you to look at. Okay, thank you. And my, my second question is, um, in terms of the new house coming onto the site, they actually are drawing water to the site because obviously they are you know, showers, baths, dishwashers. Mm -hmm. So has any assessment been made of the additional water that we've got yeah, on the site um, and um, as part, away? part of the application, um, South West Water um, had to be consulted and they confirmed that the um, foul network around there can take um, a single dwelling additional loading. Mm -hmm. I think that document was submitted somewhere in the application paper. Thank you. Customer. Um, yeah, could you uh, tell us where is the attenuation tank going to discharge to? Um, it's going to discharge into, there's a, um, on the right hand plan there, uh, there's a blue line that's running sort of from north to south. Um, on in front of number 19 yep. and the attenuation tank is going into there um, originally that route there is where all of the water coming off the, the um, upstream um, area went the Devon County Council scheme has rerouted all of that water to run in the 
the route down the right hand side is the side which goes to a different catchment area. Um, so there isn't the loading on the pipe that we're discharging the attenuation tank into anymore. Right. So it, I mean, it, so that, that shows, you know, that shows a line with an arrow on it. So that's where the pipe is intended to go. That's an existing pipe. That's an existing um, pipe which yeah. goes, which um, because that, you know, that uh, looking at the map here, that runs through the presumably <coughs> runs through the garden of of number nineteen. There's a path down there. There's ha um, houses yeah, that yeah. run um, southerly from um, number nineteen, and the drain is underneath that park. Right. And it discharges to a watercourse sort of further. Okay. Um, right. So, so that that is because I mean, it's fairly key to the whole. Um, in it. There, there's, there were actually drains on the site um, until the Down County Council scheme went in, um, and all of um, the surface water that was being collected from the site ran into that drain. So we're not changing that right. situation. Okay, that, that's all right, but it's... Are, we have got plans showing where the original drains were on the site that go into that, um, that drain. Okay, <coughs> fine. What, uh, what I'm trying to get at is it's, it's great having an attenuation tank that will catch all the water off that site, but if the attenuation tank just overfills and, you know, doesn't work properly, you know, then, you know, it's no... You, you've just got another flooding issue, haven't you? So it's... As I see it, it's very key that that, that, that is. Yeah, that's why um, it's been conditioned. Um, we've got a hydro break on it as well to ensure that um, that doesn't happen. Okay, thank you. Castle Road. Yes, thank you. Um, well, this whole application seems to hinge on the flooding problem. And could I ask? Has there been flooding in this specific area between 19 and 21 this this past 12 months, please? No, there hasn't. Thank you. Any other questions, members? <coughs> no. Thank you very much, Ms. Baker. Uh, we will now move to uh, Town Council Member Speaker to the local ward member, um, Councillor Rostey, please. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'd like to thank the committee for coming out and seeing the site on Monday. It was uh, a lovely day when we went there, and I just wish it had poured with rain, to be honest. I wish you'd actually seen what the site is like in bucketing, pouring rain, because I think it would have made it much more clear to members of the committee if they'd gone there on that day. Um, I see, it appears to me that, you know, you're basically being asked to approve to build a house in the flood zone 2 and 3, a uh, lowering level. Uh, it is now in flood zone two and three. Now that would not be consistent on the basis of things that this committee has done in the past. Um, this this is a site that, in my opinion, was left for a reason. It it was left as an open space in the original plans. That's why there's building all around it, and if there's no buildings on this particular spot, uh, there was at least a biodiversity ecological benefit of having the site there beforehand for the construction to put on it that's, that's been done now um, and it was left as an open space for the local community to enjoy. It, in clarifying some of the points that have been raised here, the developer kept the site. Um, we did not purchase it. We never owned it. The town council never owned it. The district council never owned it. You know, had we owned it, we would have put some facilities on there, we would have maintained the site. It's been sold on, um, and, and that's why we are where we're at at the moment. Uh, you, you've had, the, the key question as well here, as well was she was asked for Councillor Road here, is has there been flooding since? Well, we've had 37 objections. Now, I know, I know that the person speaking in support said they just come from nine households, but that's 37 people saying the answer to your question is, yes, our gardens are flooded. Now that's not that particularly surprising when you bear in mind this is in a flood zone two and three, but that's what local residents are saying. So the answer to the question, is there flooding going on now, regardless of the existing, of the improvements that have been put in? As far as the residents are concerned, 37 objections, right? The answer to that question is yes. I know we have councillors that are on this committee at the moment that have seen images, pictures, showing the level of flooding that's gone on. 
whilst those improvements have been put into place. Um, so the Town Council also said, if you read the review fully, the Town Council also said that it's not in the middle of summer when you get these problems, it's in the middle of winter, and that's what their concerns are on it. So the height of the um, property that's being put there, um, I draw members of the committee's attention to page 10, which I think is key, is the drainage specialist comments. The first paragraph says, we understand the ground floor level of the dwelling has been lowered to overcome other planning concerns, which it would appear now means that the house is now in flood zone two and three. Whilst the FRA has shown that the dwelling is safe for most storm events, well, that's the key problem. It is safe for most storm events, but the problem we're dealing with is climate change and flooding. And, you know, we can see in, paragraph, in, in the paragraph lower down that they're looking at 40% increase in change due to climate change of uh, a one in a hundred year event. So, and, and also when it comes to greenfield runoff rate, one in 10 years they're talking about, presumably with an increase in climate change as well, causing problems with flooding there. Um, so, uh, I mean, further down, when you look at that section, paragraph second, the second paragraph, the new Devon County Council Flood Elevation Alleviation Scheme does protect the site, but it can't be relied upon as it is not a flood defence, and as in worst case, it could fail. That's pretty unequivocal written evidence from a drainage specialist that you are looking at a site that is likely to flood. Um, so, the, the only other point, I, I, I've mentioned the 37 objections that we've had from different residents on page 11, and um, all I can do again is just thank the committee for coming out and uh, draw your attention to the written suggestions from the drainage <coughs> that we've had in front of you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Councillor Austin. Do, do members have any questions to Councillor Austin? No. Uh, in which case we shall now move into the debate. Um, who would like to go first? Councillor Abbott. I, I have uh, like to talk to some slides I've produced, please. <coughs> So this is not what it's like now. The, 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 the Devon County Council scheme has has saved houses suffering this, which they did for 25 years. It's, it's interesting, of course, that somebody gave planning permissions uh, for these lower houses to be built, uh, uh, which suffered for 25 years of flooding. But this is all gone now. You could move one, one, please. I think perhaps two. You could. This is where the footpath comes up. So here is another representation of uh, the Environment Agency's de definition of, of, of flood zones. And um, uh, it, it comes from quite a, a long way away. It's collecting water as it's coming down, off, I, I guess, from uh, from half uh, Hanger down. Hanger down, thanks. Um, uh, and if we could zoom in for the next slide, please. Right. Uh, uh, can you do a pointer? Um, Claire, with your mouse. So, um, this is the site here, uh, not in the flood zone, uh, so flood zone one, uh, and uh, flood zone three is, is where it's hatched, and flood zone two um, uh, is where it's not hatched in blue. Uh, and the extent of the flood zone uh, two um, borders, you can see these houses here uh, and surrounds some of them. <coughs> the um, <coughs> and, and uh, could, um, sorry, excuse me. 
Um, the bank, I won't go there yet. I'll just hang on for a moment. I'm sorry for being confused. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so the boundary is coarse. It, it, it's lumpy because um, yes, some some of the data uh, it has has been done with high quality survey methods on the site itself. Uh, uh, but but uh, leading up to it is it's from OS Terrain 50 to to provide a 50 meter DTM grid, a digital terrain model grid and contours. Uh, and uh, so the, the boundaries are imperfect, but we'll come to the house uh, in a minute. So, uh, yes, the next slide. <coughs> so this is Ambiental's uh, slide. Uh, this is their modeling of the flood zone uh, the, the, the potential flooding. You can see that this Devon County Council scheme is in um, and is um, taken away flooding from just to the south east of that uh, uh, culvert, which, which takes away almost all of the water that used to come down. But there is still uh, low hazard caution coming down in green to the Southeast, and then in front of the houses at the, at the head of Clayman's Pathway, and then down the, 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 the footpath to the west of the 17, it'll be. Um, and it has, as you can see near um, uh, one of the crosses there, uh, uh, an area of moderate and of significant um, flooding. And we'll see a picture of this in a minute. So, next, please, Claire. Um, so this has the arrows that I talked of between the two bone walls and then turning to the southeast, but also the arrows which are now in, in dispute. Uh, in, that they, um, at, um, the agent is saying that they are illustrating the contours, um, uh, the runoff down the front of the house, but, but they are running from very short areas uh, from the base of the house. They are not collecting water from very far, but they are going down into that uh, cul-de-sac. And the next, please. Okay, and so the drainage system, uh, we've, we've heard about the, the, the one, the, the blue line. Sorry, hangs at Council Abbott, Council Road. Chairman, we've had a presentation from our officer. We've heard from the uh, applicant's um, representative. And do we actually need another presentation from Councillor Abbott, who's not even the ward member? Well, I That's take your I point, question. but I'd, I'd like, um, I, I think we'll, we'll let Councillor Abbott continue. Thank you. If you don't want to hear about the drains, I shall skip uh, to. Well, we've um, heard it all once before. Yes, I was going to make a point about these drains. Yeah, we know all about them. We've heard them from our actually learned yet. Councillor Abbott, just, just continue. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, next slide, please. So here, it's difficult to see, but what you've got is the head of this uh, drain uh, in, in the cul-de-sac. The drain is in the corner, which you have seen yesterday uh, on the site visit. Um, uh, in the middle of that flooded uh, area that runs along the path. And this um, flood extends along the, the front of, a, uh, of the footpath. And it, uh, in, in that shot, is it, it is at the level of the drop curve. Mm. And so, in the next slide, what? No, oh, that didn't come out very well. <laughs> this is a, 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 um, um, a uh, a table of 10 years worth of rainfall uh, and uh, in May that photograph was taken in May 2021 so just three months ago and the average the average rainfall uh, varies from 43 millimeters to 105 millimeters but in May 2021 it was 142 and in 142 millimeters it was just 73 percent of the 10-year maximum this 142 millimetres, which produced the uh, level in that cul-de-sac, has been exceeded eight times 
over the last 10 years. I can send you that slide separately if you'd like to see them. So, my discussion point here is that the, 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 the flooding in the, in, the, in the head and the way that the drainage is taking, around, taking the water away seems to me to be uh, susceptible to changes in the future, let alone that it will be exceeded, that level of flooding will be exceeded once every year. Uh, eight, it's actually eight times in ten years, but uh, thereabouts. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's what makes me worried. I'm sorry. Thank you, Catherine. Catherine Foss. Yeah, Chairman. I think we need to concentrate on why we're here. The site that we saw the other day would run off any water that pitched on there whatsoever because the very way it has been hammered in and whatever happens to the site if, if we are reminded today not to go forward with this allow this application, Devon County Council to go back and take all that rubbish off and help the system have the area at no end because that's causing runoff. The runoff that's coming from behind the main scheme is not our problem. That's Devon County Council's problem. What we've got to look at is this house and what they want to do on there going to have less flooding or more flooding. Well, in my mind, if you're putting a roof on the top of quite a bit of the area to collect the water which is going into the drainage system, the uh, sewage system, but no, yeah, the clean water system, um, which it will, and the grass around it will certainly soak up more rain than you, the concrete that you've got on the site at the moment. So the rainwater is, as far as I'm concerned, and the wash off of that area, it is not the biggest issue. What we've got to come down to are we in which flood zone we're in and whether we, as we know, we're right on the borderline of uh, which flood zone we are in and in certain circumstances we wouldn't build that it has to be built on in that flood zone. But this issue of the rain uh, and the water and the rain, putting a house on it per se and doing the garden with grass would certainly remove more water, it wouldn't increase the water situation. But what comes down the Devon County Council main drain is not for us to discuss, that's not our problem, that's their problem. Um, and, that's, and we're told that that does what it needs to do. Uh, I can quite see the flooding there and the pictures that you've got, Councillor Abbott, right? and it's bound to with what's on the site at the moment. Anybody knows, I mean, I'm only, I'm only a simple farmer, but I know if I've got a grass field and it'll soak the water up, if I've got a concrete yard, you'll have water running everywhere. Uh, and that's what you've got at the moment. So whatever happens, um, something has to be done mm -hmm. on that site to alleviate the water that's running off that site. And it will at the present time. If it was a, if it was a clay park for the children, it would have been far better. Yeah. But that's not mm -hmm. what we're discussing today. We've got to discuss an applicant that has actually asked us permission to put a house on there. We've heard the flooded our, our officers' recommendations and the rest of it, and it's up to us to make a decision on that. We're getting too way off on, on water from here, there and everywhere, which is not our not correct. Um, where's our legal officer too? Was it wrong right in saying that well? Well, thank you. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> it, I mean, it is. A, it, you have got you have got um, a scheme that has been supported by the environment agency and um, and conditions requested from the drainage engineer. So it, it is for you to weigh up whether that scheme addresses your concerns about flooding satisfactorily on this location, given its location. Thank you. Yeah, could 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 you give me some clarification on building on flood zones? Yes, yeah. that's, that's the issue. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, because this is what the issue is, as far as I can see it, that we are actually looking to whether we do, whether we don't, uh, on a flood zone, and what is the policy on on building on flood zones? Well, our our policy on flood zone, we have what's called a sequential test. So, if it's to be built on a flood zone three or two. Oh. Uh, then we would look to see whether it could be built elsewhere. Obviously, a single house. There's plenty of places in South House to build a single house, so it would not, you know. Therefore, you would say you wouldn't build it. In mitigation, is that there is a 
large flood alleviation yeah. scheme. So members have to decide whether they think that's enough to allow us to, uh, the, whether it, 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 that policy is, is, is being, is, is, you know, is it, if we're sticking to the policy there or not. So I think, as, as, um, as Councillor Foss said, um, to me, uh, and I agree with him, I think that this scheme is actually will lessen the amount of flood water, surface flood water in that area. If I'm honest, but do we allow a house to be built in a flood zone two or three? And from what we've seen with all the issues we've got, that's why we don't allow our houses to be built in flood zones two and three. Because as you see the scheme they've had to put in, the problems that they've had there, and indeed I, un I totally understand their concern that this might add to it. Personally, I don't think it will, but. You know, we have to decide amongst ourselves whether we think we should build on the flood zone two or three, which will happen when they lower the, uh, the, high, the height of the van. Um, so uh, that's the decision. Councillor Hodgson, and then I'll come to Councillor Rowe. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's not just um, yes or no, actually. I think there's a, something else that I think is important here. Is that I think Duncan Council's failed up by not clearing that site. Yeah. They've left a mess, and I see no reason why they shouldn't be held to account to actually clear that off and actually leave it back to the, the natural space that was there. And then we would be back to where we got where we were when, when this, a previous committee sitting somewhere in this building um, approves that, and they would have approved it on the basis that that was being left for amenity space, which was to benefit all the housing. Mm -hmm. I think this kind of what I would call plan creep which is putting us in a very open position now, and we're being sort of given you know, to, to a feeling that, oh, well, you know, we've got to kind of try and make good on that. I think the onus is on Devon County Council to make good, and then actually that site would, would drain much better. It would be much more of a green area. Um, as Councillor Austin has said, I think he said it on Monday as well, that you know, this site could, is starting to want, to, is attempting to rewild, which is something that we are looking at here anyway. Mm -hmm. I think we're also, as a council, you know, slightly separately, but nevertheless means recognising the impact of climate emergency and what's happening. Every, you know, not a week goes by when you don't see some pond ever being flooded out. And personally, I could have put my hand on my heart and actually say, yes, this is fine, and, and give my vote towards this going ahead. And I'm very sorry to the applicants, but because I feel that you know we're putting not only the rest, a lot of other houses potentially at big risk. I don't want to watch the news on spot like my evening and spot that, oh, that's a, that's a mistake that we made. Because we're putting a, a bit of, we'd be agreeing, not only gathering up the water from that site, which is what happens when you kind of put grooves on, you know, gathering it up into an attenuation tank. You know, if A fails, B fails, C fails, all these things, we're relying on hot engineering, all very good in principle, but in practice, these things can go wrong. And I think it would be much safer to say that we should be refuse this and we get back to Devon County Council and we tell them to clear their mess off the site and allow that site to rewild. And I, I understand because that means that somebody's got a potentially useless site. But actually, for the benefit of the community, we brought into those houses thinking that was going to be some kind of an amenity area. It might not qualify for a play area, it might not be the best place in the world, but it will actually help. I think, you know, nature will help. And it won't be just grass, because grass only takes a fairly shallow root. If you allow some of the bigger plants, they take a bigger hole, and actually you get much better drainage, you get the natural sponge. So I actually okay. move, I'm with refusal. Okay, thank you for that. Just to say, obviously, Devon County Council isn't the developer, never were. Yeah. No, but they dumped on that side. No, they didn't dump on that side. The builders, when they built that land, dumped on that side. The developer dumped on that side. It was, it, for whatever reasons, it was never taken over by the town council or the district council in order to turn into the play park. But we are where we are. That land has been sold now to the applicant. It belongs to the applicant. It's entirely up to the applicant what they do. They don't have, they're under no obligation to do anything with that land whatsoever, um, as it is. So I think we, you know, okay. in, a, in a perfect world, I totally get your point, but I think we need to be very clear that we're sticking to material planning considerations here and not a sort of wish list that we would like. Um, you know, that time has passed, I'm afraid. Councillor Cam. Camp. Well, yeah, you just um, nodded what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Rowe. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Well, I agree with what Councillor Foss said, and you also, I think, think along the same lines. We are where we are. We've got this application before us. Our officers are recommending approval. 
and I am all over approval because um, we are it's a balancing act, you know, and something needs to be done on this site. We've got the application, we've got the conditions and all the rest of it, and so I, I go with approval. Thank you. Pastor Can I ask a question, um, possibly the agent? Councillor Osman talked about the 37 objections, but during your presentation you said that many of those hadn't been new. Can I ask how many of those 37 were before the flood alleviation scheme was built and before the revised plans were done? Sorry, can I just check my notes? Okay, well while you're doing that, um, Councillor Taylor. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to second um, and, and go with the officer because I think, like you, that um, when they deal with this site and get rid of the hardcore, the hard bits on the top, they will create more soap away than it is at the moment. And I, did, I think it improved the drainage and not make it worse. Okay. So I'd second that. Thank you. Councillor yes. Kent. Um, there's been a fair amount of talk about bits of grass sopping up water, which obviously it won't sop up that much, will it? So can we condition it so that they do a lot more um, diverse planting around the periphery of the property? Um, that isn't part of it. I mean, what there is, is a drainage scheme that our drainage um, uh, experts have. And is that a, like a, a biodiverse sub? It's type not. Of well, no. What they've done is, is, is basically, it's going to be grass. I and mean, what they're saying is that with the grass, it'll be more porous than it is at the moment. And therefore, more water will sink into that. And then the water, particularly on the strip at the back, it was yes. that wall that we saw and the back of the building, yeah, yeah, yeah. that is going to be collected in an attenuation tank. Albeit we don't have the Why details. Why are still using attenuation tanks? Albeit it would be a big open subject of recreational. Yeah. A pond, do you think looking. you mean? Yeah. Well, kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, Good that's not the scheme that they've come forward with. We have to judge each scheme as it's placed before us, not what we would like it to be. Okay. There's condition nine. Uh, there's condition nine, which states that the garden layout would not be altered. In order to ensure that the, the is minimized. So, that, so they can't not have the garden mass in the plan with grass cattle on. Chairman, I th you know, you've referred to flood zone two and three, and I think this, as you have said, shows the importance in any planning application of looking clearly as to where we build in the future. And I think it's been yeah. clear as a committee and the council on where we build with regard to flood zones two and three, then this type of issue should not be coming up in the future. I think the problem is, as everybody said, we, we are where we are, and something has tried to be done with the site. I'm not overly happy um, with it, but there is a balance to be had on this, and it does come down to the fact, do we allow building in the flood zone two or three years? Me, Just go to the agent, Ms. Baker. Yeah, I've, I've checked my Just dates. Numbers, right, the 37 objections were over since 2019 when this application went in. It's been out to five rounds of consultation, and across those five rounds, the objections were actually only from nine different households. But since we've come up with the final scheme, there's been two households that have objected on the last round of consultations. Okay, so we don't, to be fair, don't quite answer your question as to whether, when the alleviation went in. But I think, I mean, and also I think members should be wary that, that the members of the public are not always aware that they need to resubmit their yeah. objections. Yes, so, exactly. But I mean, I think, you know, we, we know the objections and, and we've got them. Um, were there any other members that wanted to speak? Um, yes. Councillor Smurf. Yeah, just <coughs> briefly, Chairman. Um, yeah, I mean, viewing the... Um, uh, Devon County Council flood alleviation scheme, uh, I have to say, looked a pretty impressive uh, construction, um, capable of taking a considerable amount of water. Unlike the woefully inadequate drains which are at the bottom of the culvert to the lowest point in front of number 17, which is the one which obviously does flood. And I would say that that definitely needs looking at because those, if it, for the amount of water which Councillor Abbott um, has demonstrated comes down there and obviously comes down those roads, uh, those, that drain there in front of number 17 is woefully inadequate. Um, I don't have that many concerns about the site which we're talking about because of the gradient it is slightly higher up um, and I'm not sure that putting uh, one more house there is necessarily going to, to, to create more flooding. 
Thank you. Councillor Abbott, did you want to come back yeah, briefly? Just to, uh, to, to test the waters and answer the committee, I, I second um, Councillor Hodgson's proposal. For, for refusal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, right. Are there any more members that wish to speak? Okay, we've had a proposal. I'll take the proposal for um, approval as per the officer recommendation because that, that was seconded first. Um, proposed by Councillor Rowe and seconded by Councillor Taylor. Um, as I've said, I mean, I see this very much as, you know, this is in a flood zone two or three. Do we think the flood alleviation scheme is, makes, mitigates what our policy says enough for us to allow to build in a two or three? Because there will be applications that come before us that are in zones two or three, and we'll refuse them because they're in two or three. But they may not have any flood alleviation schemes with them, and that's what you have to decide amongst yourself. So anyway, we'll go to the vote. So those uh, for in favour of approval, as per the officer recommendation, please show. And those against? And abstention, and that's because Councillor Brown yes. is not present at the initial meeting last month, so he's not allowed to Thank you for that, Councillor Brown. So that application is approved. Yep. Thank, Thank you very much, members. Right, we'll just take a quick five minute break, uh, <laughs> and then we'll come back. Chairman, <laughs> I also need to declare an interest on the next three items because I've forgotten just now. We'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.